And now, back to the weather classroom. Tornadoes can occur almost anywhere there's a severe thunderstorm, and not just in Tornado Alley. They've touched down in Maine, Oregon, Wyoming, even Alaska. Tornado season is usually from around March to August, but some twisters have hit in late November and even December. They're very unpredictable. Now, speaking of unpredictable, let's catch up with the big storm chaser himself. Out here in the wild, the key to survival is understanding your prey. Oh, all right, there is no tornado. You happy now? Huh? Tornadoes form when there's an intense thunderstorm going on. Clusters of cumulonimbus clouds will begin to boil up in the sky. There may be thunder, lightning, rain, even hail. And a lot of times, just before the telltale funnel cloud begins to form, the sky turns this kind of greenish color. And that's caused by sunlight passing through huge amounts of rain or hail in the clouds. No sign of the little boogers yet, though. Looks like it may be a little while. <laughs> okay, Brandon, when well, you keep looking. Now, experts used to think that the winds in a tornado were over 500 or maybe even 800 miles per hour. But in recent years, using things like Doppler radar, we've learned that winds rarely get above 250 miles per hour. And most twisters clock in around 110. A typical tornado usually won't be more than about 400 to 500 feet wide and will only travel a few miles. A mile wide tornado is extremely rare, but monster twisters can last for an hour or more and can travel many miles. Usually tornadoes move along the ground at about 20 to 50 miles per hour, but some race along faster than 70 miles per hour. The thing is, even the small twisters can be very powerful and cause terrible damage. So how bad can a tornado be? Well, in 1971, a scientist named Fujita came up with a scale that describes the intensity of a storm. He became really famous, and one of our very own experts at the Weather Channel was one of his students. Working with Dr. Fujita was a tremendous experience, a, a unique experience for a graduate student. I got to fly around doing hundreds of aerial damage surveys of, of hundreds of tornadoes, some ground surveys. He also had a project where we would charter a Learjet and go fly behind the squall line, monitor, monitoring the up and down motion of the storm tops to see if that related to tornado production at the ground. So had a view of clouds as they were producing tornadoes and then seeing the aftermath uh, in the damage surveys. The Fujita scale, or F-scale, is a way to characterize tornadoes based upon the damage that they produced. It goes from F-0 to F-5, with 5 being the highest. At F-0, the damage is fairly cosmetic to buildings. Shingles, a few uh, awnings uh, are damaged, some trees are knocked down, a number of branches blown off. The top end of the F-0 wind speeds are estimated to be around 72 miles per hour, the beginning of hurricane force winds. F1, getting up to around the 100 mile per hour range. Portions of roofs are blown away. Mobile homes may roll or be partly disintegrated. F2, most roofs will be taken off of homes. Mobile homes totally uh, demolished in many cases. F3, walls will be, some of the exterior walls of buildings will be demolished. The roofs will be gone. Maybe just a few inner rooms standing. F4, buildings rendered to a pile of rubble. F5, the total foundation is swept clean. The building contents broken up into little pieces and blown downwind by the tornado strong winds. Winds in some F5 tornadoes may exceed 300 miles per hour. Well, still no sign of tornadoes. No twisters. Not a cloud in the sky. Nothing. Nope. Our main responsibility at the Storm Prediction Center is to forecast severe storms. By severe storms, we mean 
thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes or produce winds over 50 knots or 58 miles per hour or hail three quarters of an inch or larger. Sometimes we get combinations of that or sometimes we just get specifically just damaging winds or something like that. But our main job is to forecast severe storms. Now we don't do it locally, we do it across the whole country. So it really takes quite a few of us to monitor the whole country. Well, we look at a menagerie of products. We use satellite imagery to give us a feel for the weather patterns that are going on across the United States and the Northern Hemisphere. When you forecast severe storms, you kind of have to start way out and move your way in. Uh, as far as a certain location or a certain couple of states. So we need to look at satellite imagery to get a feel for the weather pattern. With that, then we use model data and observational data, in other words, that which temperature, dew point, things like that, in order to get a feel for what the environment is like and how the environment is structured. It takes a certain environment to produce severe storms or supercell storms, and we look for those particular ingredients to really come together to produce that kind of activity. All right, everybody's heard of storm chasers. You see them on TV and in the movies. It takes a special kind of person to go looking for trouble like a tornado. And no, they're not crazy. Fact is, if scientists want to learn more about tornadoes, they've got to get out there with them. And these folks don't take their business lightly. Here at the University of Oklahoma is a legend among storm chasers. He's Howard Bluestein. And in over 20 years of chasing tornadoes, he's come to know these monsters as well as anybody. Uh, the, the storm chasing that uh, we've seen in the movie Twister is not quite the same as uh, what we uh, uh, call storm chasing in, in real life. Uh, we don't uh, end up stopping at, uh, at uh, friends' houses for, uh, for dinner along the way. Uh, we travel many, many thousands of miles uh, in the hopes of seeing a tornado. And we don't put ourselves in, in harm. Uh, in Twister, you saw the storm chasers getting a little bit too close for comfort near tornadoes. Uh, we try to position ourselves uh, at least a mile, perhaps two miles, or even three miles away from the tornado so that we can get a good view of the tornado, get high resolution data uh, with our radars, but also be safe. Well, the primary reason why we chase storms is that we're trying to learn why it is that some supercell storms produce tornadoes and others don't. In addition, we're trying to understand the structure of the tornado. Where are the wind speeds the strongest? How do the wind speeds vary around the tornado? In order to learn these things, you have to go out in nature and get close to the tornado and make measurements that we bring back and we analyze, and then we try to use computers to go ahead and do controlled experiments to try to understand why it is that under certain conditions you get a storm that produces a tornado and in others you do not. Don't go away. The Weather Classroom will be right back. <laughs>